You're listening to Superpower Mamas on the Superpower Up podcast, the show that embraces the art of soulful parenting. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Laura Greco, your host at Superpower Mamas on the Superpower Up podcast. Today, the topic is Mamas Reduce Stress by Mastering Your Money. And talking about money is almost like talking about the elephant in the room when we think about stress. It seems that there are no shortage of stressors, stressors in life, and especially if you're a parent. One of the challenges that hits home for many, and um, I have to say it's really true, whether you're a single parent or a mom who is married, um, either way, money can become that unspoken stressor. And that stressor can affect every area of your life. And this includes the residual effect on your parenting. Now, our guest today points out that you can be a brilliant brilliant in your work or other unnamed areas of your life. And yet, when it comes to money, you may find yourself living paycheck to paycheck. And this is exactly why I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest today. As I welcome Melissa Turnis, I would like to expand a little on her background. She is a stepmom of two grown boys, along with being a paw parent, She has learned that no one is immune to the financial stressors. Melissa is most passionate about helping successful women get out of the all too common money traps of living paycheck to paycheck, juggling money while growing a business and not having enough to invest. She shows women how to go from making money to building wealth without the pain and deprivation and restriction with her signature program, Aligned Money Life. So welcome, Melissa. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you, Laura. I'm just really excited to be here with you. It's always a wonderful thing to help moms in the in the piece of, of stress reduction around anything, for sure. Absolutely. And um, you know, there. I mean, there's so many stressors that can affect people, but um, when the money's tight or when it's not, you know, I know I was talking to one mom and, you know, just to have the support she needs, she's already working from home, but to have the support that she needs for a special needs child that she has, you know, it, it becomes a, a challenge sometimes to, you know, can, should she leave where she lives so that she can afford this treatment? You know, like there's so many things that can factor in when you're a parent um, dealing with that. And I think as a mom, your, your built-in nature is to nurture. And so it's, it's that space of, it's kind of an expanded responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. It's, I want this for my children. I want the best for my children. And and it becomes this place that grows. And, you know, all of that stuff takes money, right? Because I like to say that money touches every area of our lives because it is, like you said, with that mom. It's, yeah. is, do they get the treatment? Where do we live? You know, how are we covering all of that? And it, it just starts to come in and it can be the place that is overwhelming because we don't talk about it, right? So there's no even outlet once you get stressed out about it, to go and talk to anybody about it and, and get someone to kind of talk you off the ledge, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? If, if, the, if the kids are doing something or misbehaving or their grades are doing this or that, you can go get someone to, to kind of talk you off that ledge like, oh, it's okay. Just get a tutor. We've been through this, you know, and it all mm-hmm. works out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the area of money, we don't talk about it. So there's, it's almost the stigma if you do talk about it it becomes like oh well you know about her and it becomes this whole this whole thing that it doesn't have to be yeah and I can remember even myself you know I was I have four daughters I was raising and you know when my fourth daughter was born there was a need for me to bring in some income and Mm -hmm. you know how was I going to do that and still uh, stick to my values you know I wanted to 
I, I personally wanted to be a mom at home, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm okay with working. I'm a hard worker, you know, as far as that goes, but how was I going to create that experience and still be able to be available to my children? So it's, a, it's, you know, it's something that I even lived through, you know? I think and I think it becomes that cycle of, okay, how do I do all of this? Yes. Because right? nothing was to be the sacrifice, right? <laughs> How do I do all of this and, <laughs> and, and sleep at night, right? Or, exactly. Uh, oh, I needed to sleep so I'm not grouchy so I can be the mom I wanted to be and this and this and this. And I think with moms, it's always the, I want this and. Yes, yes. And, and if we don't see it that way, we will have that. Um, it's, I always compare it to like a computer. You know, there's always the um, pages you're not looking at that are running in the background and draining your energy, right? And <laughs> you're like, we get slower. We get slower. Why do I have 57 tabs open? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, who knew? <laughs> Well, in our show, um, Melissa, we always ask, you know, what's your superpower? So would you like to share? Have you ever thought about what's your superpower? It is. It's interesting because I think my superpower is both seeing the very details of everything as well as the big picture. So, you know, this is, this is the big picture and here are all of the fine points that have to happen to make that happen. Mm. And it's oh. interesting because I walk in places and I'm like, oh, well, da, 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 da. and it's like, it's that blessing and a curse at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. right, it's like, oh, the, oh, okay, that's uh, not it, mine. Just leave that over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It is true. And I'll bet, you know, because I, I read a little bit on your website about your story and, mm -hmm. I, and I thought to myself, wow as you mentioned this about seeing the details on the big problem, that is something you did for yourself, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. And it's, it's seeing, it's being able to step back enough to mm -hmm. see what your big or my big picture is. Right. And then, okay, here are all the details. And then how do I take action on those? Yeah. Right. It's kind of all the steps that go into it. And lots of times, we're either in kind of one side of the brain or the other side of the brain of like, oh, I can just see the grand big picture. And I have no clue about the details, but kind of bringing those together is a, an art. I think that is, you know, it's that art of bringing the pieces together to make what you want happen. Oh, you just supported my, my belief Mm -hmm. I believe everyone is an artist in some fashion or another. Mm -hmm. And you have just described it in this, in this way. <laughs> in money, beautiful. right? Do you yeah. love that? There's love, art in money. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually money is, is actually numbers, right? And numbers mm -hmm. is responsible for everything mm -hmm. that we exist in, <laughs> you know, whether it, it's music or, you know, like it's just all over us. <laughs> It is. And I love that you, um, and you describe it that way because it really makes it um, something that we can create rather than something we're stuck in. Right. And I think too, in looking at, you know, what are the patterns, right? What are the patterns that with money that we get stuck in? What are the patterns in money that we see out there and how do we bring those in and I call them money stories right so we have all these money stories that are running and it is like it's for your example it's the the canvas of your life mm -hmm. and you know what are the pictures that are painted on there and which are the ones you want to take the watercolor and kind of let's just whitewash that out like that's not something I want to carry on with me and you know oh let me just paint over that section and create a new possibility in that area. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. That is exactly what I used to tell my children. You know, your life is like a canvas. Um, they were artists, all, all of them, um, all four of them. And I uh, would say to them, you know, your life is like a canvas. You get to paint on it. And if you don't like it, you can kind of like paint over it and start again. Mm -hmm. You always have a choice. Mm -hmm. So um, 
when we think about your superpower as far as seeing the detail and the big picture, how has this powerfully impacted your way of helping other people? I think it is taking that look at what's what's the story that's running your life around money, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's both what's your story as a mom, like what, what are you bringing in? And then it's the story that's running your kids' lives around money. So, you know, there are always different phases that we go through. Like, you know, you get out of college or you, you know, start a family and it's like, oh, everything's tight. And then, you know, you, 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 get either further along in business or in your career and more money's coming in. So, you know, you have all these different phases in life with money mm-hmm. and your children kind of pick up whatever the story is you're running. So if, if your story is there's never enough money, your children kind of pick that up. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's this space of how do you go in and shift that in the mom and, and watch it shift generationally down through the children. I love that. Right? It's, that it's, is- that, it's that new possibility that you're creating. And as you create that for the mom, it trickles down. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm sure someone on your show, more is caught than taught. Right? I'm sure someone yeah. has said that. You know? And it is. Because it, we absorb the stuff that's going on around us. And that's that's where we start to see the different pieces is, oh, well, I saw her say that everything was fine. And then what happened was we didn't go do any of these things that we used to go do. They're absorbing that and being able to be a mom and have the conversation at the age appropriate levels Mm -hmm. of, you know, this is kind of what's going on. And, you know, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to, you know, we're going to do some stuff at home instead mm-hmm. of going out or we're going to, you know, how, how do you flow with that and it not be this big thing, right? Right. Where Don't the emotion, yep, yeah. where all the emotions get high, intense and mom is crabby and right. It's all, because that's, you know, that's, that's our normal nature is like, oh, everything's, you know, like the hot water heater went out and and that meant that, you know, the kind of the trickle effect. Yeah. And that when you're in that paycheck to paycheck cycle, there is the trickle effect. And it's like, and then it's like, you want to go do what? You can't go, you can't join any sports team. Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with the sports team. It has everything to do with the hot water heater. Exactly. Which is often obscure. It's mm-hmm. not known. It's not clear. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I love that you're bringing out to come coming to it from a more neutral mm-hmm. space rather than an emotional state. Right. Right. These it, are the it, facts. This is how we adjust mm-hmm. until things change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it's, it's not that the sports team is bad or, you know, the art lessons or the singing lessons or any of that becomes bad. It's just not right now, right? right. It's that shift of, you know, right now the priority is that we can take hot showers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to interrupt us for a minute. I'm loving this conversation, um, but we have to take a break. So Certainly. please, please let everyone know where they can find you, Melissa. The best place to get a hold of me is at MasterYourMoneyNow.com. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, everyone, stick with us. We're going to continue this conversation on Mamas Reduce Stress by Mastering Your Money with Melissa uh, Turnus. Uh, I'm sorry. Now I forgot. Uh, Turnus. Yes. So hold on. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts, and we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth. Because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter. We now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Reckla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, 
Remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Superpower Mamas, and I'm enjoying this lovely conversation with Melissa Turnus as we are talking about money. Reduce stress by ma- or mamas reduce stress by mastering your money. Um, so before we went on the break, of course, we were expanding on the idea of uh, re- withdrawing um, the emotion out of decisions that are made based on money and assisting the children to see what's really going on rather than um, not that they have to know details, but, you know, age appropriately um, and not make it about that things are bad. Right. Right. And I think that's a huge piece because too often the money stories that we get somewhere along in life are the ones that say, you know, money is bad in some way, or there's something wrong with having money. And all of those money stories kind of come into how we behave with money later. Mm -hmm. And when we can take that emotion out of it and have just a conversation, because most, most children don't ever remember having money conversations in a positive light with their parents. Very few. And so when we can take that emotion out of it and take the taboo out of it, yes, then the children get to come up and learn, oh, well, we can talk about this. And they may be the ones that become the spark in, in their friends' lives that say, oh, yeah, it's, we just talk about it. You know, it's because it's, it's the not stuff, the elephant in the room anymore. Right. <laughs> it's the stuff we don't talk about is where we struggle, right? Anything yeah. that we don't talk about is where we struggle. Well, and that is a, a very valid point in every area of life, mm-hmm. um, and especially the money, because I know for myself, even growing up, an observation and reflection back to that time, money mm-hmm. was tight and there was stress around it, and yet it wasn't, um, yeah, there was a lot of drama around it, yeah. you know, it tended to be a blame game rather than the, uh, let's, you know, see what the solution is. Mm-hmm. Kind of idea, so. And and I think the other side of that too is when you don't know as a child, like again, age appropriate, like what's going on, you mm-hmm. internalize there's something wrong with me or I did something wrong. Yeah. Because yeah. you just don't know, like, is it going to be a good day or is it going to be a bad day? And you have yeah. no idea what's what's triggering all that. And so then you, as a child, you you know, like, oh, if I jump through this hoop, then maybe everything will be okay. And maybe the day that you jump through hoops is the day somebody gets a bonus. And it's like, oh, now I think jumping through hoops makes everything okay. When it had, you know, it's again, it's that taking the elephant out of the room and here's what's going on. Yeah. And it and calms it, it, so much. Yes, because it actually makes you want to withdraw from your parents when you know you have to ask for things, say dues for scouting mm-hmm. or, you know, like there's, there, it became such a stressor that I, I just didn't want to be a part of anything. Um, and that can happen, not because the parents never intend for that to be the, the case, but that's what it looks like to the child. Yeah. And oftentimes the parents don't ever say that, but the children just pick up, oh, well, when I asked for this, it was bad. So I'm not going to ask for anything. Right. And then, uh, you know, again, that trickles into being able to ask. Right? Yeah. And, and as you grow up and as an adult, asking is very important. Yeah. You know, that, that skill of being able to ask instead of like, oh, no, I can't ask, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And True. so I think it is so important for moms to bring into that space, you know, like it's flowing into other areas and we have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So with your money mastery, like how did you, um, how did you begin to really un- unravel your own situation and and create something that could also help others? What happened uh, is yeah. I, I got to this space where I had all of the education, right? Like I, I knew exactly what to do um, and I was struggling miserably. And I think that was, I just kept saying to myself, but I'm smart, but I'm smart. Like that was all I that was all I could say. But but I'm that's smart. That's great. You said that at least. <laughs> um, smart. You know, like but it was like. So what's going on? <laughs> you're still like failing miserably here, and right. and so like that was all I could say. And it was like, okay, I have a degree in this, and I can't figure it out. I'm doing mm-hmm. it at work, beautifully to the penny at work, and I'm I'm struggling at home. And as I got out of debt, um what I realized is it takes 
all of these different pieces to make money work, right? It mm-hmm. takes, you need to know what you want to, whether you call that your dream or your purpose or, you know, whatever that piece yes. is. Mm-hmm. And then you need to look at your values and your priorities and your money. And when you put the four of those together and they're all going in the same direction, mm-hmm. that's when you're in alignment with your money and things go well, mm-hmm. right? And it's bringing those pieces together and they're all going in the same direction that mm-hmm. you're making progress. Right? Mm-hmm. That's when you're building wealth. And I just, I define wealth as having what you need when you need it for your, your purpose, your dream, your why, mm-hmm. however you define that piece. And so that's when, when you start bringing all those pieces together is when you end up where you want to be. Because yes. all too, right, all too often, you know, our dream and our values are together, our priorities are off in left field, whether that's because we have to work and we're working too much. Mm-hmm. So our values are family, but we're, you know, we're far away from that value because we're never home. Right. You know, and, and so it's, it's kind of that, like, everything's pulling in different directions or it's all going in the same direction. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. was the piece, right, is seeing, okay. You know, I'm not prioritizing paying attention to this. I'm not aiming at anything for what I want out of life. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem. You know, and so um, all of my little circles were scattered instead yeah. of going together. Yeah. Feels like um, when you get it out in the open like that, it, it sort of neutralizes it all and makes it more just facts like a puzzle mm-hmm. almost that you just need to realign. <laughs> Exactly. And, and it, and at that point, you know, it's, you take all of this shame out of it. Like, okay, I have a degree mm-hmm. in this and I'm like horrible at this for myself. Right. It's, it's, it's taking all of that guilt, the shame and saying, okay, now here's where I am. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like whitewashing the canvas. Okay. Here's where I am. I want to, you know, whitewash this section, which is all the debt that's, you know, not healthy for me to have. Right. You know, the mortgage is fine. You know that all that investment debt is fine, but all this consumer debt, I need to kind of whitewash the section, and mm-hmm. then like you would with a canvas. Okay, you don't just dump the whole thing at once because it's going to make the paper wrinkle. Mm-hmm. You know, you do a little section at a time, and and it becomes that space of, okay, this is just like you said, the puzzle piece that we're okay. This puzzle piece, this puzzle piece, this puzzle piece, and it when you kind of separate the emotion from it, yeah. it's a completely different game. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounds like it, it makes it um, approachable. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, I, I talk a lot about um, the balance. What moms need also is like some autonomy. Yes. Um, it, right. So yes. would you like to expand on that part of things? I would love to. Um one of the best examples I ever heard was, like, if you look at a river, it has boundaries, right? It's got yeah. edges. Yeah. And the river flows, right? And so, you know, like, that means there's life and everything. And when you take away the edges, you know, you take away the edges or the borders of the river, you get a swamp. Mm-hmm. And nothing grows in a swamp. Oh. Right? It, it just, it starts to stink, mosquitoes, like the whole, right, the whole bit. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. So I, <laughs> it's like, oh, and I think too often with moms, it's like, I'm giving my energy everywhere. There are no, there are no edges. There are no boundaries. Yeah. And, and without that, you just, you know, like you're too thin everywhere mm-hmm. and nothing is getting taken care of. And part of what I always talk with both women that are and aren't moms, you know, like, but women in general is the Mm -hmm. whole piece of taking care of yourself. And so I, whether you call it a diva account, a body love account, a self care account, but having some amount that you set aside to take care of yourself. right? Right. And that's the space because when, when you're taken care of, even if it's, you know, women are incredible at taking just a little piece mm-hmm. and creating something great with it. Mm-hmm. So I take this little piece of, you know, maybe it was going to get a pedicure. 
like just, you know, little piece right. or, you know, getting your eyebrows waxed, you know, instead right. of doing it yourself, this little thing. And I can turn it into now I can show up for my family in a massive way because yeah. I had this one little piece feedback into me. Yes. And so I think it becomes, you know, even if you're on a very, very tight money plan, mm -hmm. you know, finding $10 that you can go do something with yeah. gives you that fuel to take the next, the next steps. And I think that becomes that space of like bringing in some edges so that you have the space to go take care of yourself. I love that. It's and it is so true. Finding mm -hmm. that space, right? The um, and I love how you used it, um, self care or whatever, however mm -hmm. you want to describe it. Deeper. But it's an account. Mm -hmm. It's part of the giving back to yourself, which allows you to be um, have your bucket full, really, so you can give also. Right. Okay. Because it, I mean, all of that goes back into the, like, if if I am feeling completely depleted. Yeah my emotions are going to be on high. And so the little thing that should have registered as a two gets registered as a 10. Yes. Oh, and they're I like, it. I just dropped a pencil on the floor. Yeah. And you're <laughs> what like, happened here? <laughs> and you just blew up. Like what happened? And, and it becomes that space of, if you just have that little, little bit to start with. Yeah. It gives you that like, oh, okay, that's just a two. That's just a, you know, like, great. You flung the pen. Yeah, yeah. It's we just, can breathe through this, right? Right. Just, right? Okay. But it, it is, if you're not taking care of yourself, everything gets to that 10 level. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't think I want to be this person. Like, this isn't the person who I want to show up as. Yeah, and that, that totally hits the point because I believe that, you know, we all have a purpose, right? And I'm not talking about a, like a job you do, but mm -hmm. a purpose in being here, a gift that we share. Yes. Um, that's a divine essence, right? So mm -hmm. how can we powerfully be in that if we have all this overload going on? Right. Stressors, right? We have to um, nourish as, as important it is, as it is to nourish our children, it is just that important to nourish ourselves right. yeah. so that we can be that for our parents, our families. That's so true. It's you very know, true. I think, right. And I think about the work you're doing and the power, the power of it really, um, because money is like energy, right? Too. It's, mm -hmm. it's part of the universal flow of everything. Um, so how, would, when you look at the work that you're doing, um, how do you see this expanding and like, what's your big vision? What do you see, um, your work being able to accomplish and, you know, trickle into as time goes? I think it is all around empowering women to excel mm -hmm. in the area of money and wealth, right? Mm -hmm. Because when, when women can excel in money and wealth, they can leave the fear behind, they get to write a new script for the future, like, when women have that ability to both handle money, to amass money, to, to grow their wealth, you know, like, so they have everything that they need when they need it to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. They are impacting the world on such a different level. Yes. Right. Right. Because when women have money, they spend it in ways that are nurturing that are growing, that are expanding, and it becomes that space, they change a generation and the generation changes the generation. And suddenly it's this expansive impact that, that one woman has had because she changed the picture of her money. Yes. You know, I had one speaker um, that I was listening to um, at an event I was, and you just made me think of her because she was saying basically, I love money, you know, mm -hmm. and she says, why do I love money? Because my next door neighbor um, is doing a little business to support her family and I can spend my money there to, you know, receive what, what I'm looking for and support her little family. Right. You know? Had I not had that income, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's, it's, um, it's more, I think we do more than just quote unquote spend money. We actually right. invest we do. In, in the whole system of, of our existence mm-hmm. as a whole. And that's, I mean, that's very true because we are putting it into things that matter to us. Yes. Yes. And, and most likely it's the people that matter to us also, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is so, so true, yes. right? Very true. Well, is there a, something we haven't covered? Cause we're getting close to the end of our time, but is there something we haven't covered or something that you would like to share with our guests that would um, be helpful for them a tip to go away with? Um, One of the, my favorite quotes that I tell people all the time is that maybe it's not always about trying to fix something that's broken. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's about starting over and creating something better. Mm. And so if money feels broken in your life, looking at, okay, I can start over and create something different. I can paint a different picture. I can take this off of the canvas and paint a whole new picture. And that I think is something that all too often we try to get in and fix. And so it's just, we're creating something better. Love it. Love it. Kind of like how I feel about families, right? Mm -hmm. Just make new choices. (laughs) Just make new choices. Right. And we get to, like, Mm -hmm. I remember coming out, you know, as a young mom, how it occurred to me all of a sudden one day, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have choice. I have choice. I have choice. I can choose a different path um, from what felt like um, something I was raised with that wasn't supportive. Mm Mm-hmm. And so this carries over, of course, into every area of our life, including our money. Exactly. You know, um, uh, Melissa, I'm so, so very um, thankful to have you on our, um, on our podcast today. And uh, it was such a pleasure to have you and to, for you to be able to inspire, you know, all of us actually about the idea of mastering our money. Um, I appreciate that you shared your gift to your, your superpower of bo- both being able to see the big picture <laughs> as well as the details, because that is um, a really safe space for someone who's looking to um, adjust, you know, what's yes. been happening and, and create something new. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Please share with everyone where they can find you again, just in case they missed it. It is at masteryourmoneynow.com. And Laura, I so appreciate you having me. Oh, yeah. And, and I want to say to our listeners, too, thank you so much for joining in our conversation. You know, I, I love having this podcast and, and being able to um, share with mamas um, some inspiring information. And all I want to say is remember um, that I believe in you. You know, mamas, take care of yourselves is what I want to say. Love yourselves enough to be fully present in your life and in that of your children. Not from a place of needing, but from a place of giving, both to yourself and others. I think about the idea, uh, and I would love for you to remember this. When you look into the mirror, really see yourself. And when you're speaking, really hear yourself and value yourself so that you can do likewise for your family, for your children, and, um, and, and all the other people in your life. Your parenting truly matters, and it requires for you to be fully present. So thank you so much for listening. And until next time, I love you. Take care. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.